Hello, welcome to a coding challenge, fractal spirograph day today here on the coding train. Choo choo, all that sort of stuff. So what you're about to watch is really awkward and a little bit odd. It's gonna have some awkward edits in it. I had several long stretches where I got sort of stuck on a debugging problem. If you're interested in that longer debugging process, you can go and click on, there's a, there'll be a link in this video's description to the long, almost like two hour at this point, live stream where I uh, did this challenge. But what you'll see here is that I do have an end result that closely matches this particular image on this blog. So the blog is benice-equationblogspot.co.uk and the uh, creator of this blog um, is, uh, thank you to CJ Chen, um, the creator, I believe, of this blog, proposing and describing some of these images. So this coding challenge is gonna start twice because I'm doing this intro, and then it's gonna actually happen where I'm gonna introduce it again because I think that I don't need this intro. And then at the end, it's actually gonna end twice because I'm gonna finish and then realize and come back and add a few bits to make this more closely match the images on this particular blog. So I hope you make something creative with this. I, I really hope this, this uh, has some, put something out into the world that's useful because boy did I spend a long time trying to make this video with a lot of problems. And uh, please share it with me um, at Schiffman on Twitter, uh, hashtag coding train wreck. Hello, welcome to a coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I am going to attempt to make something that is called a fractal spirograph perhaps or fractal roulette or sort of like an orbital thing or a pattern thing. So this was a requested, it's uh, in my Rainbow Topics uh, repository, and it, I, I'm still trying to figure out um, why it's sometimes called the Benice equation and also how to pronounce that. So perhaps uh, it's called that because somebody who keeps a blog, uh, maybe their name is Benice, and I really should just research this, but I'm gonna rely on the <laughs> YouTube audience here to correct me and, and fill me in in the, in the uh, comments. So you can see here that there's this idea of nested circles uh, orbiting each other. And um, then you, the smallest one, and sort of like the last nesting of the circle, tracing out a pattern, and you get this kind of nice, beautiful, uh, fractally thing. Um, and so you can see here's a bunch of varieties of it. Uh, oh, I really like this one. Maybe we can try to do this one. So I'm gonna try to make one of these and see if we can get it to work. And you will hopefully then adjust the code, think of your own ways of making the pattern of, of using color, your own design and creativity. I'm gonna do this in processing. Now, uh, processing, if you're not familiar with it, you know, I'll try not to say this in every video I make, but it is a Java-based platform uh, with a uh, robust drawing library and a, a development environment. So I'm gonna be able to just write j code with Java syntax, call a lot of draw drawing functions, and see the results of my program in a quick sketching, prototyping way. Now, another thing I want to mention is this is quite similar, and let me come over to the whiteboard here. This is quite similar to a coding challenge I did a while back called Solar System. <laughs> Do you guys, yes, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. Did you hear that or am I just doing weird stuff? People started cheering in the hallway, I'm not sure why. Uh, okay, so uh, in the Solar System coding challenge, I created a system that had a circle, and each circle had some number of other circles orbiting around it. And those had other circles orbiting, orbiting around it. And I used to do this functions like translate and rotate. And these function calls were nested. So I would, from the center of one circle, translate out and then rotate by some angle. And then I would translate out again and rotate by some angle. So that I could have nested circles orbiting each other which is very similar to, and so the idea of this is like the sun, and this is a planet, and this is the moon, that sort of thing. This is quite similar to what you're seeing in this orbital fractal thingy. Um, but I think what I want to attempt to do in this challenge, for no other reason than just to see a different way of doing it, is to uh, actually use some trigonometry math. So if I know the radius of this circle, and I want to have another circle right outside of it, and I know its radius, then I can figure out where this circle should be positioned based on, uh, based on polar coordinates. And this is something that I've used again and again and again in various coding challenges where I say, okay, I have, an, uh, I have a, a, a two-dimensional space with an xy coordinate, and then I can also think of that xy coordinate as a distance from the center r and an angle. So uh, x equals radius, times cosine of that angle, y equals radius, times
times sine of that angle. And this is a formula for converting from a polar coordinate to a Cartesian coordinate that I've used again and again, and I will once again link in this video's description to a uh, video that covers the, the, this formula in more detail. So let's start uh, trying to program this. Let's start in a very basic way. What do I need? I need a circle in the center. So I'm, I'm going to make a global variable, which might not be necessary, called r. But let's just make it global just to, just to see later how we're going to use it. And let's make that radius uh, 100. Let's start with a radius of 100. So I'm going to set a background color of 51, because that's my favorite background color. And um, I am going to then say uh, no stroke. No, no, no. I'm going to say stroke of 255, no fill. So I want to have an outline of a circle with no interior. And then I'm going to use the ellipse function, which draws a circle, at uh, 300, 300 with r times 2 as the width uh, and r times 2 as the height. And if I do this, I have my first, first circle. So some things that I might do just to make it easier for you to see on the live stream or however you're watching this uh, is just increase the stroke weight a little bit so I have a little bit of a thicker circle. Now, I want to position a circle right outside of it, and maybe I want its radius to be half the size. Hmm. So let's work out the math for this. So what I need to do is I also need an x and a y. So that's going to be the center of the first circle. And I think I'm going to need to do this in an object-oriented way soon enough. <laughs> Boy, I really didn't plan this out at all. So this is going to be an x and y. So now I want another circle. I'm going to say, uh, and, and let me not make these global variables. Actually, I'm just going to sort of figure out a static version of this just to get started. Uh, then I'm going to say uh, r equals r times 0 0.5. So r divides by 2. So I'm going to have a, a uh, I'm going to say uh, r2 for the second circle. Uh, I'm definitely going to need to do some object-oriented way of nesting these, but I'm just doing it this way for right now just to get the basic idea. So now what I need to do is say uh, x2 equals x plus r plus r2. And then I can say ellipse x2, y, r2 times 2, r2 times 2. And now we can see I have two circles. So I just wanted to see the basic idea there of putting two next to each other. Why does this work? Here's a circle at x, y and here is a circle at x2, y. This is r1 and this is r2. So you can see x2 is offset by x by r1 plus r2. Now, of course, things are going to change quite a bit once I start this to rotate. Let's see if we can just make just this rotate around. How do I do that? So really, the, the answer here is what I really need is an x2 and a y2. And Really what R, what I, what I, the distance is, oh boy, these are terrible variable names. I'm going to clean this up in such a nice way so soon. We've really got to get to it. So let's say R, R, <laughs> oh my God. Let's make this R1, X1, Y1, just for the, let's just at least make this make some amount of sense for a second. Uh, X2, Y2. And what I want to do is I want to say, uh, r sum equals r1 plus r2. And then x2 equals r sum times cosine of some angle. And y2 equals r sum times sine of some angle, right? What I want is to rotate this around. So I want to do this formula, but this r is actually the sum of r1 and r2. So now what I'm going to do is uh, uh, do this, and I'm going to say the angle is zero. So I'm going to start with an angle of zero, and now, whoa, that is way off. Way off. What mistake did I make? Okay, let's look at this. R2 is half of R1, R sum is R1 plus X2 is R, ah, so it's right, but it needs to be offset by the, where it originally was. So this is just the offset from the center of R1. So x2 really equals x1 plus this, xy1 plus this. There we go. So now the circle's in the right place. Now let's make this angle a global variable. And let's say angle plus equals 0 0.1. 
and we can see, there we go. So we now have the circle rotating around. So this is the core mechanic. I used, I could have done this in a much simpler, I don't know if it's simpler is the right word, but with less code and less math, I could have just used translate and rotate and achieved the same effect. See my other video about how to do that. But one of the reasons why I wanted to do it this way is I have full control. Like I can now uh, draw a path. So I'm going to just add something to this. I'm going to say array list p vector uh, path. So what am I doing here? I'm using a data structure that's a Java data structure called an array list. It's like a flexibly sized array. And I'm going to fill it with p vector objects. p vector objects are two-dimensional or three-dimensional vectors, an x and a y, and an x, a y, and a z. So what I want to do if, uh, in setup then is I'm going to say path equals new array list filled with p vectors. And then what I want to do is every time I rotate this, I want to say uh, path.add a new p vector at x2, y2. So as this thing is going, I'm going to store all of the points to keep track of a path. And then at the end here, I can say uh, for every single position in the path. So this is a nice Java enhanced for each loop. For every p vector pause in path, I want to say uh, set a vertex at pause.x and pause.y. And I'm going to say begin shape and end shape to make this one continuous path. And now we can see this. So whoops, we can see that it's tracing its path. So we've got the core idea down from the Benice equation, the orbital fractal, which is that we need to have some way of positioning a circle outside of another circle rotating, and then uh, tr keep track of the points of its path and uh, draw something. OK, so we're good. Now, We've got a serious problem here. This is not sustainable, right? I could maybe do some kind of like weird for loop here and kind of just keep building on the previous one, but I don't know. I don't, that's a problem. So what I want to do is—is um, is this really going to work? Well, we're going to give it a try. What I'm, I might have some angle issues, <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I what I need is to make this into an object. So let's take a look at what I mean by that. So I need an object to keep track of what? I need an object to keep track of a, a circle that has, so each circle, let's call it an, uh, I get, yeah, circ, let's call it an orbit. I don't know. I don't know what it should be called. I'll call it a circle because I'm confused. Uh, it needs to have an X, a Y, and an R. And then it would have like a child. We can think of these as parent-child relationships. This is the parent of this circle, and if this one has one going around it, this is the child of this one, and if this one has a little one. So as this one, so that's what we can think of. Now, it also probably needs, um, it needs to know, it probably needs to know, have a reference to its parent so that it can pull its parent's radius. And then it also needs to have some type of uh, orbit speed. So I think I could call each of these an orbit. An orbit has its current x, y. It has its own radius. And it might have a child. It might have a parent. Right? The first one has no parent. The last one has no child. So I think this is a structure of each object that we can build. I think this is going to work. Hmm. I'm sure you guys can think of better ways to do this. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to make a new tab here in processing. And I'm going to name that tab orbit. And I'm going to write a class to create an orbit. And I'm going to say each orbit has what? And I could use a p vector to describe its position. But I'm going to be a little bit, I'm just going to use an x and a y here. So it needs an x and a y. It needs a radius. That's its own radius. And it needs what? It needs a parent. Its parent is another instance of an orbit. And it maybe has a child. Um, you know, I could call its like parent the, its son and its ch the child its moon, but let's just use, I think parent and child will be easier for me to remember. And then what else did I say? Uh, orbit speed. Okay, so uh, it needs, I'm just going to call it um, speed. Oh, and guess what? It also needs an angle, right? It needs to keep track of that angle. 
Um, so angle and angular velocity is really what we've got here. Okay, so all of these things are all of the properties this object needs. So when I make an orbit, I can maybe get... Uh, now, this is like a, a, a kind of annoying convention that I follow, but the arguments to a constructor in Java are uh, variables that are kind of like temporary. I mean, these are arguments to the constructor, but I'm going to use them just as temporary variables to fill the... Um, to fill the, the actual instance variables of the object itself. So I kind of just name them with an underscore to mark them as different. But I realize this often looks kind of uh, cryptic or confusing. But let's do this. And then uh, if I'm making one, I could assign, I would assign myself as a parent. So parent equals P. So let's think about how, so something like this might work. Like I'm going to make an orbit, it's going to have an x and a y, it's going to have an r radius, and it's going to have a parent orbit thing. So I'm going to comment all this out, because we might need it again later. But what's interesting about this is I don't actually need an array of all of the orbit objects. I could make one, but each orbit object is simply going to keep track of the next one. So to iterate through them, I can just go to one, which points to the next, which points to the next. And this is actually, somewhat by accident, a data structure called a linked list. So we're, we're kind of programming a bit of a linked list here, um, because each orbit is linked in like a list format. So I'm going to say orbit, and I could call it root, like it's the core, but I'm going to call it sun. I'm going to call it sun. And I'm going to say sun is a new orbit, and it, is, it has a x and a y, which is the middle. It has a radius, which is 100. And what else did I say it needs? It needs a parent. And this one has no parent. So I'm going to say null. Now, I could do something. Here's an interesting technique in Java. I could actually overload the constructor. Um, and actually, let's do this, just so you see this. You can actually write for an object multiple constructors. In JavaScript, you would just have one, and you would, you would query the amount of arguments. But I'm going to uh, do it this way. I'm going to write another constructor that does not have the fourth option. And I'm going to say this, which means call, the, call a different constructor with x, y, r, and null. So meaning, if you ever create an orbit without the fourth argument, it just does the other constructor and sends it null. I, there's not really a major point in me doing this, but I don't want to have a parent for the original one. So now, one thing I definitely want is I want some sort of display function, which these days I'm uh, calling show. And what I want to do in the show function is say stroke 255, stroke weight 2, and then ellipse at the x and y with r times 2, r times 2. So now, if I here, if in draw I just say sun.show, if I run this again, we should see there it is. Now, how come I guess I forgot no fill? Sun.show, there it is. Okay. I don't know, how long have you been watching this video and all I've got is a circle on the screen? I'm very, very sorry. But it, I'm hoping this will get more interesting soon. Okay, so now what we need to do is we probably want to say, how do we add a child? Maybe what we should do is say a son. Let's just write a function to it. Son.addChild. I'm just going to write a function called son.addChild. I mean, I'm going to write a function called add child. So I need to write add child. What does add child do? Okay, so first of all, uh, it has a child. So I'm going to I'm going to set child explicitly to null here. I'm going to set angle to zero and uh, angle speed to 0 0.1 just to give those some values. So adding a child means I don't want it to be null anymore. I want to say child equals new uh, orbit. Now I need to give it an x and a y, a radius, and a parent. Okay, so the x and the y, so first of all, I should say uh, new radius equals r times 0 0.05. So I'm just going to divide it by half. I, there's probably some appropriate ratios I'm supposed to use, but I'll just try uh, dividing it by, half, by two. Uh, uh, so I want the new orbit. Now I need to get those x and y points. 
So a new x should equal x plus r plus new, new radius, right? Because I just want to offset it by its own x plus its own radius plus the new radius. And new y will just be the same. So I want to create a new orbit at x, new x, new y, and I want a new x, new y with new r. I'm just going to call it new r, just to, for a little bit more shorthand. And then its parent is this. So I'm having the function itself, I'm having the object itself create its own child, and it's going to pass a reference to itself to the child, so that the child then keeps track of the parent. Good? OK. So now, let's see what's happening here. So now, what if I say, uh, what if I say orbit current equals sun? Why, I'm going to have to sort of type this out. So what I want to do is I want to write a loop. I want to say, show all the orbits. So start with the sun, draw it. Look at the sun's child draw it. Look at the sun's child, child, draw it. And when eventually one of the ch children has no child, then stop. So as long as current is not equal to null, say current.show, and then I'm going to say current equals sun.child. So this is now an algorithm I have, look at this, for saying, look at the start with one. This is iterating through all of them. It's kind of like, I probably should do something like, um, you know, write a function that returns it called next or something. But just for simplicity, I'm just going to say the current equals its child. So start with current equal to sun. It's not null, so show it. Then get the child. Is it null? It's not. Then show it. Then get the child. And this should say not sun.child, current.child, right? Because I'm really, in a way, I, I, I'm, maybe I'll call this next. While next is not null, go to the next child. Something like that. Doesn't matter whether they call it current or next or whatever. The point is, it's a variable that's iterating through all of the things. So let's see what we get now. Awesome. We've got the son and his child. Now, what if I have this actually also return the child? So in addition to creating it and assigning it, it returns a reference to it. Because then what I could do is I could say uh, uh, orbit child equals sun dot add child. Th now this is terrible, but I could then say orbit child two equals child one dot add child, something like that, right? So this is this idea of like I could have the sun create a child and then the child of the sun create a child, et cetera, et cetera. So I probably want to write a loop there. But you can see, now I've got a bunch of them. This is pretty good. This is looking pretty good. OK, so why don't we do this? Why don't we, write a, why don't we do this a certain number of times, three times? And I think we can employ the same sort of idea where we can say, and this needs to be an integer, where we can say uh, orbit next equals sun. So, uh, Next equals next dot add child. Right? So this is a little loop to start with one and then add a child, get its reference back, do it again, do it again, do it again. So this should give me. Oh, right, because I started with the son, then I added three children. So you can see I was like, why do I have four? <laughs> I have four because I did it three times, but I started with one. And we could even see here, you know, this should probably be a parameter, but if I made them much smaller, like 0.2, uh, well, well, that's a bad idea. Let's just leave it at 0.5. So this is good. So you can obviously play with this. Okay, now, interestingly enough, I just want to show you something really quickly. What if I just change this to a minus? Look what I got there. So that's interesting to see, a little quick variation, right? Instead of offsetting it out by the sum of the radii, what if I offset it out by one radius minus the other, that's going to give me a circle inside. So that's something that you might, a little variation that you might play with. OK, now, what happens if we want these things to rotate? Is this just going to work? Uh, what if I write in the orbit? Uh, OK, so I need to write a update function. Update uh, function. So first, 
what did I do back here? I kind of figured out this algorithm here. Let's grab this algorithm. So our sum in this case is now the sum of my own radius plus my parents' radius. Then my, the x should update to be the parents' x plus the sum times cosine of the angle, right? And the y, so this is updating, should be the parents' y plus the sum times sine of the angle. So this is me updating its position every frame, right? I want to look at the, I want to offset my location based on the parents' x, y um, uh, plus a, uh, whatever my rotation is and the, the sum of the two radii. So that should update everything. And then in addition to that, I want to say angle plus equals angle speed. Or what did I call that? Uh, just speed. So I always want to increment the angle. I have a feeling there's a mistake here. So that should update. So let me just run this. No syntax errors. I think I'm missing some pieces, but let's, let's throw caution to the wind. And as we iterate through them all, let's also update them. Okay, what's wrong here? Ah, okay, I've got a null pointer exception. Why? Because I don't want to update it if it has no parents. So I'm trying to, well, yeah, the, the parent never moves, never spins. So it's really only for the sun. So I'm trying to, you know, where I put the, um, you know, one thing I could do, uh, there's a bunch of ways I could solve this, but probably a good way to do this is just to say, if parent does not equal null, I'll just do this right now, just to make sure it's not a null parent, then I'm going to actually do this. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Now, why, why is it doing that? I have a feeling it's doing that because they're all spinning at the same exact speed. Let's see if I, uh, let's see if I can create another, I'm going to create another argument here, float s for speed, and I'm going to say speed equals s, and actually before I even do that, let's just give them a random speed. Let's just try a random speed between, ze uh, between 0 0.01 and 0.1. And forget about this for a second. So let's give them a random speed. Hmm, whoops, <laughs> speed is assigned twice. Uh, so I need to get rid of this and like leave these random speeds. Let's run this again and see. So you can see now we're seeing some like slightly different offsets from each other. Now there's probably an exact science to this and they all also, there's a bit of an issue where they all have the same, uh, they all have the same angle of rotation. I am looking at the YouTube chat right now. Speed reset to 0.1. Um, so I think, I wanna look at the original, uh, the original version of this again. Let's pull that up. And let's see if we can kind of uncover what the relationship is between. So first of all, are they, this one is moving, so they're moving in opposite. That one's moving, this, this one is moving counterclockwise and the other one is moving clockwise. So this would be something to do. <laughs> so let's actually think about that. So I have a kind of idea. Let's just actually leave them with the same. So first of all, let me add another, uh, let's, let's minimize this. Let me add another argument here. Uh, and um, what I'm going to do is just give the first one 0.1. So I'm gonna, uh, I, well, I'll, I'll, I'm, there's so many different ways I could do this, but let's, Let's try to be a little somewhat consistent about it. Let's add a fourth argument for speed right here, okay? So let's make sure that works, and then speed equals s. Now they should all have exactly, whoops, and here I should pass in, oh, speed. So now they all have the same exact speed, and that's a little bit fast. I, wanna, I think it'll be easier to sort of figure this out if we watch it a little bit more slowly. So let's, uh, let's start with just kind of like 0 0.4, oops, 0 0.04 or something. Okay, that's a little bit easier to look at. Okay, now let's just try a simple idea of when I make the child, the child should have the negative speed of the parent. Same speed but opposite direction. Now this looks more like something. The question is, is this exactly the path 
that is, and you can see, this, is this exactly the path? Yeah, speed is actually angular velocity, someone in the YouTube chat writes, which is a good point. It seem, and I'm also getting, it seems that speed is i minus two times the parent speed. So maybe it actually is faster, but, um, but in the opposite direction. So let's try that. Yeah, this looks so, but I've started with it too fast. Um, so let's try it as much slower. Yeah, this looks good. So I feel like this looks much more like what the original uh, program had. So now did the original one also have a total of four circles? Let's see, let's look back at that original example. And I can't see, zero, one. It also looks like they've, they're shrinking more by like a third. I can't exactly tell, you know, exactly, but it looks like there's four and it looks like maybe they're shrinking by a third. So let's, um, let's divide it by three and see. So this looks much more like what happened there and I think we can also start the original one at 200. Uh, I guess that's a little bit off this window, so let's try 150. There we go. So now I think we've gotten kind of exactly what's in that thing. <laughs> let's try tracing the path. Okay, um, so all we need to do is we need, to, uh, we need to, to have a reference to the last one. So what's the best way for us to reference the last one? When this is done, next is null, unfortunately. So I think, um, I think what I'll do is, just for simplicity, is I'll just keep track of a global variable called end and at the end, end equals next. So the very last child is the end. And then I can actually just go back and add this, back, this path stuff exactly back in. And uh, I can say um, n.x and n.y. So this should now be that path. And let's make the path, I don't know, pink or something or purple. Let's make it um, just so we can see it. And let's, um, let's also make the uh, orbits, let's make them maybe a little bit lighter. Give them a little alpha. And let's see what we get. <laughs> well, that's certainly something. Let me make the stroke weight a little bit more visible here. And we can now see how it's tracing that path. It's kind of nice. It doesn't look like that fractal pattern at all. I'm seeing in the chat, um, that I'm being suggested to multiply it by negative three. So maybe I just had that off. Negative three, let's try that. There we go. So this looks more like that pattern. Uh, and second circle has five times the speed and last has 20 <laughs> times four. So I think the, how those speeds are changing is actually, it, you know, we can see what kind of patterns, that's times four. I think they're actually uh, almost exponentially increasing. Okay, there was an awkward edit there, but there was a bunch of debugging things that happened that I was trying to get this right by just eyeballing it. And actually, uh, the chat nicely pointed out to me that the formula is just in the comments lower down on the page. So I'm gonna go back down here and look at the formula, which is right here. And it says, uh, okay, so speed of speed is equal to k, a constant to the n minus one power, and n being um, the level. So the first circle is zero, the next one is one, so n must be the level. And then also something that is important here is I also need to use 10 or 11 circles where I am in my code, I actually only have uh, three. Uh, four because the first one is zero. So um, what I want to do is go and look, how am I getting the speed? So I'm multiplying the speed by negative two. I think I've tried a bunch of different things. So maybe where I last left off, it might've been four. We can see multiply, increasing the speed gives me kind of more interesting patterns. But really what I want is not, what I want to do is rather than have the speed be this thing that changes, I want each orbit to keep track of its level. So ultimately what I want to do is just send in the number zero. The sun is zero. So I'm going to add a variable called n to keep track of its level. And instead of s, I'm going to pass in n. 
and I'm going to set n equal to that level. Then speed is going to be something that I calculate based on the formula. So if I go back and look at the formula, it is k. Now, I don't fully understand this, but k, I believe, is usually a, a, a constant. So I think maybe I can just sort of like pick one of these. <laughs> so I am going to uh, arbitrarily pick uh, k of 2. And then I'm going to say speed equals power k to the n minus 1. Is that, is that correct? k to the n minus 1, yes. And then when I create the next orbit, I just send in n plus 1. So the next one is the next level. And the next one is the next level. Let's just take a look at this really briefly. And why is this giving me, oh, this should be an integer. I'm using integers for the level. And same thing here. Not that this really matters that much. So now, whoa, something is way off. Ah, OK, here's an issue. These values are very large. And that's my, so one thing I could do is just maybe think of them as angles and convert them to radians. And now we've got something that more, now there's a couple problems with this. First of all, I'm getting a pretty interesting shape even just from this. One thing that I need to do is I need them to alternate their direction. So the nice thing about setting something to the power of an integer is that if it's, to the, if it's a negative number to the power of 2 squared, it'll be positive. The power of 3, negative. The power of 4, positive. So I can actually just say k equals negative 2. And now they're going to go in opposite directions. And you can see this kind of looks remarkably like what I started with. But let's try having this k be something larger. And we can start to see now that this resembles much more closely to the pattern that we saw in this original, um, this original image. Now, I'm not getting so much detail here. And I think the way that I'm going to get more detail is by actually having many, many more levels. So there's only three. Let's add 10. And now we can see, now I'm still, my incrementation steps are kind of large from that conversion to radians. So there's probably a way for me to have the time steps be smaller so I can get more detail out of here. Because, you know, this would be interesting to try adding 100 of these. But it can't even, I don't know, maybe it's, let's just try adding 20. But my incrementation steps are so large that I'm not getting that level of detail. So we've, we've, <laughs> we've got something that kind of, um, that kind of resembles it. Um, I, I suppose if I wanted to really trace it out, um, I could uh, have the incrementation steps be much smaller. Maybe I could just divide by 1,000, but add like 100. It's going so, so slow. So I'm going to have to speed this up and time lapse it. I'm going to leave that <laughs> to you as a challenge. So the challenge that you should do, and um, uh, maybe I'll come back and revisit this in a future challenge. Let me get this back to a state where we get something, is to take this basic idea and more closely match the level of detail in these images and also think about how can you adjust where, how the circles are positioned relative to each other to change, to get these different kinds of patterns. And I would read through this entire page and, uh, and see, look at some of these kind of amazing, crazy patterns and see what you can get, see how you can color it, see what you can do. And these are, uh, I, I'm loving this already. I just wanna, let's try one more thing. Let's at least try the thing where we nest the circles inside of themselves rather than outside. Whoops, that didn't work. Uh, Sum. Where's my sum? That's what I'm looking for here. Uh, uh, yes, so let me say minus here with the sum. And now we can see this particular pattern that's very similar, but now sort of more inside of this particular uh, circle. Okay, so um, thank you for watching this coding challenge. I have no idea if this was interesting or useful at all. I feel like there were some nuggets at the beginning. If you've made it to the end of this, Hashtag train wreck, coding train wreck, I think is the new appropriate hashtag for this channel. Uh, you can tweet me, at Schiffman, hashtag coding train wreck, with your non-train wreck, beautiful visualizations that you've made from this uh, Benice, Benice, Beniche, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, somebody will tell me, I'm sure, in the comments. Uh, equation, uh, orbital fractals. Thank you for watching. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> 
for like the 10,000th time for a quick addendum. This train wreck is not finished. Uh, some nice, I got some wonderful nice comments in the chat and I would like to improve. Uh, I think it's worth taking an extra minute of your time to improve my particular drawing uh, to match more closely what's going on here. So first of all, the first thing, and I'm sure everybody who, want, it, this is bothering a lot of you, I know, which is that I didn't actually line everything up with the top. And you'll notice that if we look at mine, it lines up perfectly to the right at the zero angle. So I just want to go rotate negative pi divided by two and negative 90 degrees. So first thing I can do is just very quickly fix the angle to be negative pi divided by two. And in this case, now we at least have the pattern pointing up. Now one of the reasons why we don't have the same level of detail that's here is that I, my incrementation amount is quite large. So as it moves, the rotation is happening fast and I want to see this play out in real time. But if you'll notice, this, is, this has a kind of like stuttery, I mean, it's a, it's a GIF, so there's probably some, some issues with how that's done, but this has a kind of, this is actually probably, each time it moves, it's kind of drawn a whole lot of points. So I can emulate that. So I'm gonna make a global variable, which I'm gonna call, uh, I'm gonna call resolution. And I'm gonna set that resolution right now to, uh, one, to one. <laughs> so what I want to do is here, what I want to do is look at the speed and I want to divide the speed by resolution. Meaning, I, how, many, how, how many incremental steps do I want to take in between each, each angular change of that angular velocity? So maybe I just want each time step is like a full unit of one. So I want to divide by resolution there. And then what I need to do here is each frame, each cycle through draw, I want to do this same updating the path n amount of times, that resolution amount of times. So I'm going to write a for loop here to do this n amount of times. So there's a little bit of an issue here where I'm drawing the, I'm going to be drawing the circle multiple times, but I want to get all those incremental path points n amount of times. Now resolution amount of times. I shouldn't use n because that's being used somewhere else. Now if I run this, this is exactly what I had before. Now, I could, if I wanted, take this out. I, I kind of did this all at once because I practiced this a minute ago when I was debugging. Um, so, uh, but even if I just change that resolution now to something like 10, what you're going to get is you're going to see this giving us a finer level of detail, but it's going to be running more slowly because the whole animation is doing kind of 10 steps. So one way I can kind of clean that up is I can do 10 steps each cycle through draw to keep that same speed. The one thing you'll notice is those circles look much brighter because they've been layered on top of each other a bunch of times. I mean, one thing I could actually do is just not bother to draw the circles and we could just see the path. And there it is. And I probably should also, you know, stop it from redrawing when it gets around to full rotation. So you can see it's, it's kind of drawing over itself, but you can see this has much more like the quality of what's in the original image. And, you know, just to sort of see, you know, if I make the resolution 100, does this really give us anything better? I'm not sure, but you can kind of see now I've got even more levels of detail. So the number of levels of cir nested circles and that resolution, you know, it would be, I think, a great thing to try making this very high, you know, blowing this up and making this a large pixel area and trying to really see how detailed can you make that and, and make a kind of like a high resolution image version of this. Okay, so um, thank you for watching this uh, coding challenge. Um, I think there's a lot of exciting creative possibilities that you could build off of it if you were able to follow this. I will post, in the GitHub repository, I will post both a processing version of this and a P5.js version of this that you can run in the browser and I look forward to seeing what you make. Thanks for watching.